Uh. Bam. That. Okay. Thoughts? <laughs> we even check all of our errors, chat. That's pretty damn good. Um... Okay, so let's make another terminal. Uh, let stream is TCP stream connect one two seven does zero zero one one two three four. Mm, dot on wrap. Mm-hmm. Do you need to read the length if you can read the stream to an end? Uh I just I I always prefer it that way. Because I can do one allocation and I don't have to like guess. Yeah, it would be nice, but I mean, I guess I could, right? Because, yeah, that would be a nice UX, right? Vec new, read to end. Is it that? Yeah. Read to end, write it out, set it to 755 octal, and fucking run it. Bip bop boodle. Okay. Uh. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, does that not close Netcat? Oh, read-only file system. Didn't restart? What do you mean? I mean, it's connecting in. Read-only file system is a problem, but that's not the problem. The problem is Netcat is waiting forever. I think you're using a previous version of the runner. I thought I... I'm pretty sure I rebooted it. But yeah, it's an issue with the file. Um, uh, cat file to NC. 
Sending file via netcat. Do I just cat it? Um, oh, and then that. If I write it all, uh, oh, quit after EOF on standard in. Uh huh? Can I do Q0? Ah? Uh ah? -huh? Uh -huh? Um, and then how do I make that read write? Uh, how do I make it read right? Root equals root flags. RW? Hmm. Can't mount tempfs? I mean, I could. It's just hard. Oh, uh, RW. I forgot. What am I fucking doing? You just say RW. Hey! And let's do a Q1, if that was... Okay. What does that mean? There's these bytes. Oh, um... That's probably Chamad failing. Because I don't think you can set the perms. But we can force the perms to be uh, executable on everything. In fact, I think they just will be executable on fat. No. Okay, so then it is a uh, uh, exec error. Um, Linux, uh, VFAT exec. And then... How do I say... Do I do UMask? Uh, 
root flags equals view masks. That like that. Can I do that? Fuck. Because I imagine it exists. Yeah, so it's failing to execute it. Um, uh, Chad, how do I do this? Wait. Execution was work, um... Um, oh, oh, it's because I bet it's a uh, command. I bet it's command. I bet command is trying to open like proc fucking something to make the pipe. Let's try a uh, let's try a more basic bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that UMask is necessary because we we're executing shit no problem before. Let's just do this. Command new. Uh, command. Uh, uh, command. Just spawn result dot wait, I think. Spawn process. See, let's try this one, chat. Nice. Yeah, that's it. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Fucking easy clap, chat. Fucking doubters. Any doubters in here? Huh? Fucking doubters? Um... Okay. Easy, 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 right? I like that, but I don't want to print anywhere else until it runs. Here we go again. Scoop. 
Look at that. <laughs> that clap is cursed. Thank you, Colonel Space DHCP. Yeah, right? It's also just really fast. I mean, that's, that's a nice setup. <laughs> Pretty simple, bare-bones Linux setup. Probably don't need, like, half the disk shit we added. But whatever, you know? Um. Okay. So I want to make uh, something that lets me save it. This, this killer. And... Also, how could I get the output? Spawn gives me child. Let me see if I can capture it manually. Uh, piped. Monkas. Hey. Hey. Oh, well, well that's just fucking easy then. <laughs> fucking hypocrite. That? Beautiful. Doubters? Fuck. Right? Pipe those little fucks over? Fucking blast that? Oh, wait. Wait, was it fi- wait. Wait, is that the problem? Oh, is that- Oh, that's opening dev null! That's why! It's a ho ho ho! He- Who? Okay, just leave it open. <laughs> just leave that open. No, don't dev null it! It's trying to open dev null! Fucking easy! Well, that's been root caused. <laughs> Oh, chat, this is one of the best init's I've ever seen. Okay, and we only allow one worker at a time. Right? Only one worker at a time. Um which is which is good. Because that's how we're going to prevent multi-processing. VEC with capacity? We have no idea what size it's going to be. <laughs> oh, but we should... We should do... Uh, for RAM saving, uh, we should put this in here. That way it saves some RAM. <laughs> ah, we'll just do this. Sixteen megs. Just we'll start there. 
If it does resizing, it's going to be very minor. <laughs> but yeah, I think 16 megs should do for most Rust statically compiled things. Okay, and then we write, file is wrote, runt, and then we run that, we get the result, and then once we have result, we're just waiting on pipes. Okay, so that is spawn. So you run spawn, we get the child, the child has Standard in, standard out. So let's get those. Um, oh, yeah. What does dash Q do? Quit after EOF on standard in. And delay. Because I need it to then fucking give me the response, right? Right? I need you to hear. What I need is it, I need it to shut down the transmit side, but continue listening. Then you'd have to implement the size thing. Yeah, right? Like, but I don't want to do that. That's fucking ass. That's so much code. We could also maybe use uh, NCAT from NMAP Suite. Let's see if they have an option for it. Only send data, quit on EOF, only receive data, no shutdown. Oh, continue half duplet. Oh, I think it just by default, it does what we want if we get NCAT. du dash b what the fuck is d oh yeah yeah i i ain't doing that shit This one, I think, will just work out of the box. Continue half duplex when receiving EOF on shutdown and standard in. The, current, the receiving side doesn't wait for the socket to close. It, wait, it waits for it to shut down. You can shut down only one side. Right, you can do half duplex TCP. And I imagine that's what this is going to let us do. Relax, Desu, okay? You don't have to get in such a fucking tizzy, all right? But yeah, it's uh, if you've never used them, they're kind of obscure. It's rare that they come into play, but every every API will have support. Um, it's uh, fucking like everything will support it. There'll be yeah, shutdown. 
and then you give it sides, right? And you can shut down read, write, or both. And this will typically, uh, this will send, this, this sends a flag. This says, like, I'm fucking done, which should usually cause EOF. So, uh, NCAT. So now we have NCAT. Fin, yeah. So let's see. Yep, that that just immediately closes down. Although arguably the socket shut down there. So let me do a sleep here. We'll just sleep for five seconds. So the the socket should remain open for five seconds. Yeah, just by default, this already works the way that I want it to. Okay, um... So then, we can do result.standardout. It should be guaranteed that we have both standard out and standard error. And then I guess what what are we what are we doing? Reading a couple bytes and blasting them over, like something like that. Like uh, um. Command, spawn, child, standard out, child standard out, implement. Implements read, standard error, implements read. So we can basically do read, and then on the child, we can do try wait. Because I want to interleave standard out and standard error as much as I can. So, uh, while let's just do loop. If let sum status is equal to result dot wait with output break result status command finished execution. Like that. And then I think the pipes will close. So we should be able to do let mute buff is equal to OUA 1024. And we can do standard out dot read buff. If let this is bread, and then we'll do uh, stream dot write all buff bread. So standard out and standard error, like that.
We might have to better handle, uh... Uh... Mute. We might have to better handle these. These might return an error when the connection closes. I'm not 100% sure. That has result output. Wait with output. Wait. Oh. Wait, try wait. I was looking at the wrong fucking thing. And then these are mute. Get the pipes. Do standard out and standard error. And then, yeah, we're like close to this. Oh, you bitch. What? Really? Really? Bro. Because that takes the whole self. Oh, you dick. I don't think that fixes it, right? Yeah, it doesn't fix it. Oh, bro. Bro. Bro, I don't want to do that. Oh, fucking ass. Okay. Oh, you know what? I might want weight with output. The changes. There it is. Those pipes never close. Oh, they just return zero, don't they? When you EOF? They just continuously return zero? Outbred and airbred. We have an outbred and airbred. Okay. Perfect. That's what I wanted. If outbred is zero and airbred is zero. Relay uh, data. Oh, wait. Can I just put it in here? Into standard IO?
Um. Bro, like, can I just do this? Okay. What can I get with a TCP socket? Uh, TCP stream. TCP stream. I can Azroth D. Um. <laughs> oh, from Raw FD. Okay, into Raw FD. Let's try this. I'm going to need use. Uh, Russell just fucking tell me what it needs. There we go. Okay. And then process has from raw FD. Nice. I don't know if that's a leak. Into raw FD. Consumes the object returning the underlying raw file descriptor from raw FD. Creates a new instance. Okay, I think that doesn't create a leak. From raw FD. Construct an object from a raw file descriptor from raw FD. This function is typically used to consume ownership of the file descriptor. When used in this way, the returned object will take responsibility for closing it when the object goes out of scope. So that is correct. So, yep, that, that fucking breaks. It, we get a, a copy of the stream. It then breaks it into an FD, and then it turns it back into a nice Rust object. And now we can just do result that way. It, But won't close it three times? Nope, because stdio from raw FD cr creates an owned value. Consumes ownership. The returned object will take responsibility, right? This API. The returned object will take responsibility for closing it when it goes out of scope. Consuming ownership is not strictly guaranteed. Oh, do I need to use owned FD? Use a from owned FD from implementation for an API? I think it's more that this then goes into the trait implementation of from raw FD. Uh, from raw FD for standard IO.
from inner. And then that will have a drop handler, right? I don't see errors in console. I think we actually do want owned FD. The resource pointed to by FD must be open and suitable for assuming ownership. The resource must not require any cleanup other than close. Don't need write. What was the other one? Standard IO. Okay. So now we use an owned FD. Constructs a new instance of self from the given raw file descriptor. The resource pointed to by FD must be open and suitable for assuming ownership. The resource must not. So IO safety. Owned FD is like arc, and borrowed FD is like a ref arc. So owned FD has a drop implementation, which we'll call libc close. Yep, owned FD will call libc close on the FD. And TCP stream into raw FD will literally get the inner, uh, the inner part and it goes away. It ceases, it ceases to exist. Consumes the object, yeah. Into raw FD. Into raw FD. Yep. Yeah, it, so we get rid of the stream entirely. There we go. Okay, this should be way better. And yeah, standard error and standard out will directly go to us from the kernel. Uh, those are just directly piped over the socket, which is nice. So here we go. Hello world. Hello, bo hello b GCC. And we should be able to run this, and it will just run. Yeah! Look at that! Look at that. Now, we need to make this... Mm, how does this handle a uh, seg fault? There's a seg fault, and looks graceful. Looks totally fine. It's just gone. Um. Yeah. Wait. What's ha uh? Well, if I'm accepting new sockets, it means I returned out. Oh, it returned success. Uh, command returned result dot weights. Status. Bam. 
Yep. Unix weight status 11, which is segfault. So nice. So that is correctly handling a segfaulting process under us. Let's try a bus error. Because sometimes they can just slightly be handled differently. That looks fine. Good. Maybe write the status to the socket. I don't know. I can just look at the output if I have to. I mean, arguably, if I want to run this fully headless, it's probably good to have. Um... And then what is this uh, a wait exit status? Oh, that implements display. What does display look like? Probably just 11. Oh! Uh, stream dot writes all info. Bam. Uh, and put a new line on it. And then you know that that will be the exact last bytes. Like, the last byte you get will be a new line. OA. Uh, and then you can just parse it until command returned if you need to, like, parse out the status like that. Oh, uh, okay. Woo! It's <laughs> so fucking sick. <laughs> oh, so good. It's just a, a one-click easy deployment. <laughs> 10 out of 10 API, right? Right? <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's sick. It's so sick. Who needs Docker, right? Chat, you want to do the fun thing? My my parent bit is one, and it's not due to a fork bombage. <laughs> Your parents fucking a knit. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just beautiful. 
We have a working network stack. It gets a DHCP lease, default routes, and you run shit on it. <laughs> uh, it's just so fucking cool. What a great API. <laughs> and yeah, you're getting sequential PIDs, which is really nice because that's telling us that command new is not doing some like really weird double fork exec bash execution thing, right? It's very nice to see the PIDs are sequential because that's telling me that just one process is getting made. Otherwise, we would have to use ex uh, exec ourselves. But yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good. I think that is a, a pretty good API, <laughs> and it returns instantly. We print minimal stuff here, just enough information if we need to debug it, and yeah. Now, we need to handle, uh, uh, killing this. Um. Okay, so let's try that with, uh, test.c. Sleep 10. Okay. So right now, this will just hang for 10 seconds. It will still exit, but it will just hang, right? And we want to be like, oh no, it's hanging and I don't want it to hang or something, you know? Um, how do I make a tab? Split. Um... Vim... Make file... Five dash one, two, three, five. Like that. So now we should be able to hit either port. Nice. Uh, print len got one, two, three, five. Chad, how do you like that I have booting the Linux kernel as part of my dev fucking loop and it's still faster than whatever dev loop you have at your company? Yeah. Yeah, that make you feel like shit? It should. <laughs> okay. Then we have... One, two, three, five. That does. <laughs> the dev loop at my company makes me want to end myself. Oh no. Okay, uh, when we hit one, two, three, five. We want to, uh, I want to just throw that in the trash. I don't know why the socket's not closing. Why is that socket not closing? Why does that not close? Why, why does that not close?
What? I'm so confused. Is it because of the way that the like loopback thing works? Because this one will return. Why does the other one not? What? Why does this one return? What's the fucking difference? It's the same code. What? What? Chad, I don't understand how it works. Do I need to like send some bytes or something for it to work? Kill command received. Okay, now there's like actually stuff to close. What? I guess this one I'm closing. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, whatever. I, I think it's working. Um, now what we need to do is kill the process. Okay. Cons, they're static. Kill requested. Atomic bool is atomic bool new false. Use standard sync atomic, atomic bool ordering. Kill requested dot store false ordering relaxed. Okay, mark that we're good to go. Store true. Request the process to be killed. Or do I need the handle? Do I need access to the handle? Do I just put the handle in a fucking global? Child implement send and sync. Can I send a kill? Uh, no, I have to do try wait. Um, I mean, arguably, I could send kill to the PID. Um, can I kill negative one?
I mean, why the fuck not? Right? Right? We don't make any threads, so it doesn't matter. But on Linux, the call kill negative one sig does not signal the calling process. It sends to all processes that the calling process may send signals to, which I would imagine is fucking everything. Because <laughs> I'm in it. Okay, it's sleeping. Bam! Let's go! Let's go! Bam! Literally just kill everything. Everything. I don't want unwraps here. Do I have any unwraps other than these? I don't think so. That we can just discard. Like here, it's like if we don't get the re if we don't get the result, we don't get the fucking result. Whatever. And then uh, stream dot. Let's do a shutdown. See if that helps. Fifty seven. Mute. Cargo check. Yeah, I don't really care if I can't do that. Let's see if that makes this close right away no okay so that's just pointless okay and then here i could shut down the read side actually So shutdown will be implied on close, right? Um Right, like it has to call it on on close. But what I could do is uh I mean, once we get EOF, it's already closed, so it doesn't matter. Dude, even Clippy's happy. Here it is. Okay. Run this. Run this. Bam. Okay, let's do a test.c. Let's do some toxic ass shit. For int i equals zero, i is less than 10, i, mm, five, i plus plus. Let's do a little fork. Uh, and we'll sleep on all of them. Printf sleeping. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty hostile environment. Oops, didn't mean that. Fine. Here. Whoop! 
I want GCC. All right, that's pretty ass. Bam, got Sig kill. I, I think it's safe to say, I mean, I'm sending Sig kill to literally all processors. Like, there's, there's nothing more that I can do. If that doesn't kill them, there's no API in the world that will. <laughs> so, I think I'm happy with this. I think this is safe. I don't think this is going to, like, accidentally not work at all. I think that's going to always work. And I think this is always going to work. And we don't have any unwraps or panics. I think it's, I think this is ready. I think this is ready for deployment. And then we'll deploy the debug version because might as well have all of the Rust assertions and stuff because perf doesn't matter. Like perf literally doesn't matter. Like theoretically the reads and writes could maybe be a little faster. But like this, this is just passing an FD over. Like this is just blocking on the kernel. Now what's cool is that we have only one thread. Well, we have two threads. This one is blocking and will do effectively nothing. And this one is blocking either here, waiting for the process to exit, or it's blocking waiting for an incoming request. So the, the overhead of this is, I mean, I don't think I can make it smaller. <laughs> Theoretically, I guess I could make do without the thread and use a, a select to select either socket, but then I have to select the sockets and dynamically put this into the select back and forth and shit. So, okay. So what I need to do is uh, configure the kernel to support hopefully enough to run on the actual hardware. So hopefully, I'll be booting from a USB stick, but I think that will show up as SDA. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't need that, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no way you need that. Okay, so I think we'll be good on disk drivers because if it works in Kimu, then it should work on hardware because hardware, basically nothing uses weird shit. Ethernet driver support. That's so much, so many drivers. Intel? Yes. <laughs> um... Is this the E810? Is that in this? I40E? I think so. But all of my shit is Intel, and this is... It's, we support every Intel NIC. Okay?
And we just have to put this on a, a flash drive. Pseudo wipe F A dev S D B. Pseudo make FS V fat dev S D B. Pseudo mount dev S D B mount mount. Make der P mount mount bin uh S bin. I mean, it's just that. It's just Espen and it, right? We have Espen and it. Oh, and then we need to put the kernel on this. Um, oh, and let's hard code the boot params. Okay. I imagine it'll be dev SDA. Um, maybe I should add USB support quickly. Okay, don't care. What's gadgets? Does that just work? Oh. That's, that's the actual one. Okay. XHCI and EHCI. For debug. Sure. 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 USB mass storage. Scuzzy. So mass storage, SCSI support. God, I can't imagine needing more than that, right? So these are all like very specific drivers. So we added USB mass storage, USB attached SCSI. We added USB 1.1, some Intel thing. Oh, 
Honestly, I don't even think I need that. But it shouldn't affect the boot, in my opinion. Okay. So now we should have USB support, which is what we're going to be booting off of. And then let's do... Where is the flags? Do you think I want POSIT cl clocks and timers? Oh, that's timers. Set time, get time, nano sleep will be limited to real time, monotonic, and boot time. That's all I care about. See you around, Meta. Where is it? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I can set my default host name. Where's the, um, oh, here we go. Okay. Now we're going to get USB stacks, which is fun. And then I need, uh, let's try it. So this is going to be, I'm not going to be getting my titties. So I won't see TTY output because I'm piping it to TTYS1, I think. Well, let's see. Yep, I have no TTY on this box, but I should be able to connect in. Oh, maybe not. Really? Interesting. Oh, dev SDA1. Yeah, that's uh, another change. I th I think this will just be fine. Um, Linux, Arc, Boot, BZ Image, Mount, Mount. Fuck. And then let's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's ready. Right? So in theory, I'm going to plug this in, and not only is it going to boot into this environment, but it's, it's just going to be configured. It's going to just show up on my network. And I'm going to be able to connect in. Okay. USB stick is engaged. Hard drive is pulled. Because I did have a hard drive in it. Now I don't. 
Double checking that I don't have any others. Nope, no other hard drives in there. I don't even know if you can hear me when I'm in my server room, to be honest. If you can hear me, press 1732 in chat. 1732. Okay, and then I can. Should be able to plug into my 10 gig NIC instead of the 1 gig NIC. Bam! So, in theory, there's only DevSDA. That's the goal, is that there is nothing other than DevSDA on this system. And if there is, then we're fucked. I gotta get back to my computer, it's booting. Okay. You can hear me in there. Does it like crackle? I wonder if the signal like gets bad. Chat, there it is. Chat. Do I hit enter? What do I do? What do I do? Okay, I'll hit enter. Okay, so E1000, IGB. <laughs> okay, there's no dev SDA. USB. USB config failed out of memory. Okay, but it it got the IP, so that ha that has ten gigabit networking. Yeah, link is up ten gigabit. <laughs> Let's go. So just need to figure out what's going on here. I think it just doesn't see. USB? I, I don't even know, how, like, what you do for USB. Obviously, serial's working. Obviously, the built-in command line is working because the built-in command line specified the DHCP and, and do this shit. Um, so... It just needs... Better USB support. PCIe port services disabled. Well, 
Let's... I think that would be a fun one to fix. I don't think that's the issue. But what's the... So I guess it's just USB. Um, Linux, USB, boot, mm, kernel config. Uh, what are we doing? We're uh, we're setting up a lightweight Linux distribution for benchmarking Linux stuff. Um. This VFAT should be fine. Um... I imagine I really just need USB. Would it be under? Like, I don't think so. Uh, Linux. USB SC of SCSI. USB going on YouTube at some time in the future? Yeah. Like, what is this? An adapter. Yes, yes, yes. Is it like a different menu? Physical layer drivers? No. See you around Nightshade. Have a good time. I mean, did we see anything about USB? USB head core. Ooh, failed to get, failed to Sisyphus get Durant state. 
Do you need Sisyphus support? Is that the problem? Bunch of HCI. Get Durant. Yeah, 10 ports detected. Config failed out of memory, which I think is coming from this. Yeah. Yeah, that's the error. Uh, Sisyphus. So we don't actually have to mount Sisyphus because obviously it wouldn't be mounted at this point. But we just need to probably add support for Sisyphus in the um, file system, sudo. Let's just give it procfs and Sisyphus. What's kcore? Virtual elf core. It says fast way to get those. Okay, that should work. Yeah, definitely just an error there. Um, okay. Is it going to work, chat? I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work, chat. I have faith. Bam. Makes sense. Okay. And it is VFAT. So that's what we want. So we copy the Byzantine image. We make SBIN. And we copy the... We copy uh, target this debug init mount mount sbin. And then we go run another flash drive. Oh. I'm, I forgot my microphone wasn't in my pocket. You got yoinked. You got yoinked, chat. Okay, should be good. All right. So now we do a little USB flip flop. We take that one out. We put this one in. Now that's a massive downgrade because this USB stick is significantly worse. So that'll be fun. But we don't really need to write to it. We can kind of rely on the OS's caching for our file that we drop. Cope. Okay. Um, now we just have to reset the server. Reset.
Should be rebooting. Kernel command line was fine. Yeah, because this should show up as dev SDA. Assuming there's no other hard drives on the system, which there aren't. It's cool that it set the host name to Polar. Like, 100% that's going to register and I'm going to be able to ping it. Yeah, I got NTP servers. There we go. Chat, bets, odds that this comes up, runs our init, internet comes, the networking comes up, and I'm able to send commands to it. Hundred percent believer. Come on, you bitch. Hopefully all our cores come online too. What did this say up top? NRCPU is 256, NRCPU mass 96, 96. CPUs 0 through 95. Total of 96 processors activated. Four logical pro uh, processors, 96 activated. That sounds pretty good to me. Oh, oh, there's only one thing that can mean chat. There's only one thing. And it will register as polar, I think, in my network. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Let's fucking go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> fucking EZ clap! 10 gigabit networking, and that's it. All right, chat, you want to run one of the benchmarks we wrote? We did that in a different terminal. This one. So in theory, um, cargo run. Uh, x 64 unknown Linux muscle release. File. Just want to make sure it's static. It is. Uh, NCAT polar.bfa.lk one, two, three, four, this. Oh, shit. I, it wrote the fuck. Oh, it ran! It ran! It did the whole fucking benchmark! Uh, okay, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking, chat. I'm fucking panicking. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, I got so many windows open. Uh, what, what were we doing? We would write it to data.txt? <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't run instantly.
And now we pull down the graph. Look at this graph. Is a GNU plot running? I think it is. Yep. And make. Look at that. That's a nice flat fucking line, chat. Isn't that cool? We're just running the exact same stuff. Now we're just immediately deploying it out to another server. Okay. We're not printing until the benchmark's complete, but it, it theoretically can affect things, especially with, like, cash. Um... Oh, it doesn't look like it really changed anything. The graph looks equally shit. It, it's definitely a little smoother. Um, turn again. Why is that so much higher? 16,000? The process should be exiting. I'm curious if I'm accumulating here. Like, I wonder if this is going to go further up the graph. It shouldn't. Back to 10,000. But yeah, here you see the same rough pattern where it's the one that's low and then all the others grouped up. Okay. Hmm. Like, would this... Would this paging in be a big issue? Um, how do you, uh... The M-lock? M lock all libc mcl current libc mcl future assert that this is equal to zero so lock them in Um, all pages are guaranteed to be a resident in RAM when the call returns successfully. The pages are guaranteed to stay in RAM until later unlocked. Okay, so right away we're going to do that. And let's see if that will help. Nice. Looks like it's running.
There we go. Hmm. I don't think that really made a change. Um, what else could it be? Let's see. What else could we do here? We shouldn't be doing any dynamic allocations. Just a couple DREFI boos. And then let's go to 96. Let's do 96 workers. Okay. Set affinity. Yep, that should be enough. Bench itters. M lock all. Oh, we haven't been building it. Jesus Christ, chat. Fucking dumbass. Uh, cargo add libc. Consumers. This is just workers. Worker ID. Bam. Worker ID plus one. So first core is pinned to zero. Then these all go through the remaining cores. Worker ID is zero indexed. Okay. Now running 96. Uh, this might take too long to run. Is that complete? Did it run? Is it done? Is that new data? Is this? See if I do this, run this. Yep, no such file or directory. Bam. But yeah, I think that was new data. That's 96 cores up. Oh, one of them, I think this should panic. I think if a bit is set, isn't this supposed to panic? Because I don't have 97 cores. I'm just requesting to pin to that. Assert that it's zero. Mmm. Yeah, no, no panics, it's just data. There should be 96. Uh, do these 
stabilize out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four. Wait. What? That's not all the data. Right? Oh, Jesus. It's not building the right target. Fuck, we need to make like a make file. This is really risky right now. Cargo, build, release, target, x 664 unknown, Linux, Moosel. Then, ncats, polar.bfa.lk, one, two, three, four. Pipe that into a target, x664, unknown, Linux, muscle, release, atomic, q, chat, no crate. Okay. Uh Thank you. Thank you. And then, how do you silence these? Oh, and did this NCAT return right away? Because I think this one will. No. There we go. At. At hides it. NCAT puller.bfa.lk. One, two, three, five. Dev null. So that will kill everything and then we'll send it off. And I'm writing the wrong fucking make file. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, clean, make, yep, sent kill command, here we go again, kill command, and response, nice, okay. Now, now we can does not that not show up as the process exiting? Not that I really give a shit. Okay. We're going to do 95 workers, and this should run. Should be. And then the data. And I could make it so there's a print here, or it's like, 
Locked and pinned. Ready to... Flynn. That verifies it's actually running the updated version, which is nice. Oh yeah, this might take really long to run. Yeah, so let's do this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Holy shit. Oh! 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 Ah! 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 I need to fix this GNU plot. I think... I think a new plot on Windows, you just don't even need. Uh, set terminal persist. What's this? Uh, Let's see. What? Why did that make my screens flicker? Will it do it again? Oh God, that's like full screen. Okay. I don't want that. QT. QT persist. That one seems to work. Okay. Uh... God damn. God damn! Let's, uh, how do I do a GNU plot for loop? Two, two. Uh, 95 data.txt using one I I think that's working. If I do 96, does this bitch? No. I don't know if this is inclusive or not. Oh, that got mad. So yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't think it's inclusive. GNU plot iteration. Plot four, plot four, variable and in start end increments. Um, is it inclusive? 
Start end. Unless I have 96, but... Oh, yeah, I run... Wait. Yeah, wait, I have 95 threads. What? What? God, I don't understand. Chad, I don't understand how computers work. Um... GNU plot... Plot four. Whoa! Iteration until the end of data, you can use a star? So you can say i2 to star data file using 1 to i? Oh, yeah. That's pretty fucking good. You, you can do you can do this four two colon star you won the I it will it goes until it has an issue until all data is consumed so all you can use it for data sets all files all columns it goes until like a file doesn't match or a column doesn't exist that's fucking sick. Oh, we didn't like this one because he can't zoom or some shit. Bro, let me zoom. Hmm. GNU plot best terminal windows. Is there, like, an ideal one to use? Uh, Windows, WXT, and QT. And WXT... Yeah, that returns to the GNU plot terminal. GNU plot WXT exit. There isn't exactly a functionality to bind a Windows close button. You can use bind to define a hotkey. Exits the loop. So no. A new plot persist. Do I want to use a new plot dash dash persist? Normally you don't have to do that, but maybe you do with this terminal for some reason on Windows. Ooh. Hey, that works. Okay. We have a usable GNU plot. And I should be able to zoom. It'll take a second. Oh. Okay. Fuck yeah. Wow. Much bigger range on these.
It's interesting how tightly these bands work together. Oh shit, that's... Um... God, that looks sick. Um... That's pretty good. There's definitely some, some jitter between them. And how much did locking help? I think quite a bit. 23 to 28K? And this sets the range to... Yeah, this is a way tighter banding. Oh, maybe not. 23 to 28. Never mind. So that didn't really do shit. Um, let's up the step size. And let's do a big run. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, it's definitely not silent, and I, I don't know why. I don't know if that's the kernel. It's not demand paging, because it, it literally can't be. It could be Numa. Definitely smoother. Now you're starting to see some patterns emerge. It's interesting that one core is consistently slow. Let's try and turn on Numa. Um, oh, fuck. How do you do it? I don't know if I know how to do it without a program. I don't know what the program uses. Does the program use... proc or sysfs? Do you use proc or sysfs? Um... Hmm. Dude, I don't know. How do you... Is it a syscall? Mem policy. Yeah, so static nodes. Set the calling tasks memory policy to mode specified by the mode arguments and the set of nodes specified by nmask. nmask is a bit mask of node IDs containing at least max node IDs. So I guess it does a scan. Okay.
for a thread and its children. Numa balancing. When mode is bind. Oh, these are optional flags. Okay. Default bind interleave, preferred or local. Which I'll describe below. All modes except for default require the caller to specify the node or nodes to which the mode applies. See node mask. Default specifies that any non-default thread memory policy be removed so that the memory policy falls back to the system default policy. The system default policy is local allocation. That is allocate memory on the node of the CPU that triggered the allocation. Interesting. Node mass must be null. If the local node has no free memory, interesting. I didn't know that was the default policy on the system. Allocate memory on the node. Or is that policy like overridden by something else? Like, do I have to call this with mpol default? Let's do a get mem policy. See what it shits out. Get mem policy. Let mute mode is zero. Mute mode. Mute. And mask. Yeah. That has to be enough. There's mute pointer. Max node. I'm just gonna say it in w entries for maximum safety. And then I get an adder. It's number of bytes. Um. Yeah, like, do I not want local? Because isn't everything allocated up ahead of time? There's really nothing dynamic. I mean, the rearm barrier literally can't even do dynamic allocations. It's no standard and, and doesn't use alloc. So these are all fixed. Let's see if we can find some stability here. What's the adder and flags? If flag specifies adder, then information returned about the policy governing the address given an adder. Policy may be different from the thread's default policy if mbind or one of the helper functions described in NUMA 3 has been used to establish a policy for a memory range. Okay, so I think we just give null. And then... Zero. 
assert that this is zero. Got policy mode and mask. And then just, I don't know, fucking return. Get the fuck out of there. Uh, do I have to syscall it? Please have syscall. Please have syscall. Please have this call. Dick. What's this bitching about? Fucking zero. Oh, wait, wait. wait. No mute. Uh. Can I just do zero? Yeah. It is zero. Okay. Uh, do I have to give it flags? Are flags required? I've never, I've never called this API. I don't fucking know. <laughs> uh, If the mode argument is not null, then it will store the policy mode and other shit. If flags is zero, then the thread's default policy is returned. And the buffers pointed to by mode adder must be specified as null. Okay, so that is correct. So, um... Mode is an int, end mask. And then this is node mask defines max node at you long width. What? I feel like that's not the issue. Oh, is this is this something the kernel doesn't have support for? Is this like an Eno sup type beat? I bet this is an Eno sup type beat. Um, assert that. Prints standard IO error last OS error that yeah fuck god damn it son of a bitch um Good. Nope, nope. Don't give a fuck. No. No. What is this? No. No. Oh! I could change that I can map in. No. Fuck huge pages. What's this? Nah. Um. 
Interesting. Interesting. The Amazon VM stats. Here we go. Memf uh oh not MMFT. Was it one of these? Mem barrier, few texts. Obsolete. Map file names to a handle. Then use the handle? What the fuck? I didn't... I don't know you could do that. Turn that on. Okay. Okay, few texts. Fuck it, we'll even give it IOU ring, right? Um Turn that on. Okay. That's a bunch more features, but that's not what we need. Um, we probably don't have, like, NUMA support or something in, which is... Yeah, that is processor type and features. And let's give... MCE. This is called emulation. Huh, that's how I did it. ACPI SRAT. A flat machine will be split into virtual nodes. Only useful for debugging, yeah. Max NUMA nodes. As a power of two? Node shift, six. Um, uh. Um, hundred hertz. On each processor, number, yep, total. I mean, can I just turn that off? 
How can I turn off the fucking timer? Um. Yeah, is there a way that I can go like even perfier? I'm going to turn on scaling support. Yep, just sets it to the highest. Statistics. P state. I don't know what that is. We're not running on AMD. Now merged into ACPI CPU frequency. Okay. Okay. Then we want some ACPI stuff. Sure. What's this? Sure. Sure. Um, yup. Not that I'm using, uh, I'm not using NVDIMs. Hmm. What's the... Really? Wasn't there supposed to be a thing in here? I feel like there was supposed to be a thing in there. Does he... What's this? It may provide a sufficient functional dev. That's cool. That's cool. Um. Yes, I
There wasn't really anything in here, was there? We did turn on ACPI, right? Er, not ACPI. We turn on the scaling. We gotta find Numa. Where the fuck was Numa again? Thought it was here. Numa. Yeah, we didn't have Numa support before. Not that I think that would have done anything. But, I mean, obviously we want Numa. And we, w we went through all these. All of it seemed reasonable. Hmm. I think that's probably pretty good. What's, uh, what can I do about the Linux kernel tick rate? No hertz? Okay. No hertz in general setup time or subsystem. Timer tick handling. Okay. So constant rate, no dine ticks. Um. Maximum skew. Okay, let's just say a high res timer. So this is config no hertz. So what's tickless? I've never done tickless. Omit scheduling clock ticks for CPUs with only one runnable task. If a CPU has only one runnable task, no scheduling clock interrupts. Is that no hertz full? Adaptively, try to shut down the tick wherever possible. Even when the CPU is running tasks, typically this requires running a single task on the CPU. Chances for running tick lists are maximized when the task mostly runs in user spaces and has few kernel activity. That's my case exactly. There's no kernel activity. You will need to fill up the no hertz full boot parameter with the range of Dynetic CPUs to use it. This is implemented at the expense of some overhead and user kernel transitions, syscalls, exceptions, interrupts. By default, without passing the no hertz full parameter, this just behaves as no hertz idle. So I need to put no hertz full in. So we're going to go full tickless. Full tickless, high res timer. We also changed the actual tick rate down to 100 hertz from the 250 for when the tick is running. Uh, 
Okay, we got some we got some perf options, chat. We kind of went through all those. Everything looked good. We'll add MFD support. Not that we're gonna necessarily use it right now, but that should be pretty good. Um Tunneling. Don't need filter. Bridging, none of those. Don't really need any of those. Okay, and then... I think I'm pretty happy with all those settings. Some big changes. Oh, we need to set the, um, the arguments, the command line. And we need to have what? No hurts? You're prohibited from marking all the CPUs as adaptive tick. At least one non-adaptive tick CPU must remain online to handle timekeeping tasks. Okay, so I'm going to say no hertz full is equal to, uh, are these zero index CPUs? So 256, can I do that? Um, are these zero index CPU IDs? Linux, Nortz, command line. I want to do all but one. Um, no hurts. What's RCU no CVs? Hopefully I can just say one to 256. Only disabled on a core where there's a single runnable thread. Yeah, I think it's zero based. So we'll go with this. Let's ship it. Slightly, slightly perfier kernel design, NUMA awareness, and uh, hopefully really good scheduling support. Because, yeah, this seems like this actually does basically eliminate scheduling ticks. You maybe get a, a, a few every few seconds. Um, BZ image to mount 
mount B is that image. Copy. Target. Debug init. To mount mount. S bin init. Mount mount. Sync. 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 All right. Gonna go swap this over and we'll have a fresh new kernel. So 100 hertz tick rate, no hertz full, uh, basically all but the zeroth core are gonna be scheduled. Honestly, I kind of wish that we made the init pin to core zero because we could just say that init basically runs on core zero and whatever you spawn will also run in that, but like, whatever. Okay, that's in. I could also, uh, yeah, I mean, if I set up network booting, then I wouldn't have to run back and forth, but I'm pretty sure network booting would be more time. Setting up network booting would be more than the couple trips we've made. So let's, uh, let's go reboot the server. Reset, yes. But this should do it. This should do it. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum, bum, ba, de, de, de. Function not implemented, so that should be gone. Anyone buy anything cool with, with Black Friday? <clears throat> I didn't even realize it was Black Friday. Which is probably good. <laughs> I, pr I thought about it a couple times earlier in the week and then I literally forgot when it was Black Friday okay You know what? I think we got a Numa mapping. Yep, nodes. Yep, and we have all seven nodes. Brought up eight nodes, 96 CPUs. Beautiful. System booted up just fine. Did it say anything about... Did it say anything about the command line option we passed in? Nice, there's all the SRAT entries. SRAT is the the node mapping table. It tells you your APIC ID to node mapping. There's your, here's your SRAT node ranges. So this is saying what physical memory belongs to which nodes. Ignoring all the X2 APIC entries. Per CPU. Ooh. Incorrect CPU range. Unknown option will be passed to user space. Okay. 
What can you actually pass in? How do you, how do, you do it? What are you supposed to do? Uh... Must be a positive range in ascending order. The value n can be used to represent the numerically last CPU on the system. Foo CPU 16 to n would be equivalent to 16 to 31 on a 32 core system. N is dynamic, so if the system changes the bitmap width, And will also change. Special case tolerant group name all has the meaning of selecting all CPUs such that no hertz full all is equivalent to no hertz full zero to n. But I thought you couldn't do that. I mean, I'd say all. I ain't a bitch. You want me to say all? I'll fucking say all. I ain't a bitch. Do do do. Do 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 do. Yeah, if I put all... No hertz full. By default, no CPU will be adaptive. You're prohibited from marking all of the CPUs as adaptive tick, at least one non-adaptive CPU must remain online. This is not an issue for config no hertz idle, because there's no running user processes, blah, blah, blah. Did we do config no hertz idle? What, what, what config did we do? Why do I feel like that's not rebooting? Come on. Uh, and where are these? I think timing, general. Uh, Timer subsystem. And then we want. We picked no hertz full. And the Note that this means that your system must have at least two CPUs in order for config no hertz full. Okay, and that's what we're doing. Did that not reset? No, it did. Oh, fuck, scrolling. Okay, and then we have to do all the parameters, I think. Uh, what are all the parameters? I guess we can just go look. 
right here. RW, would have forgotten that. IP is DHCP. H. No hertz full. One through N. Come on. Give me the good shit. Um, it was after the APIC countries, right? Per CPU. Yup, 96, 96, 8 nodes. Oh. Incorrect CPU range. Oh shit, it appended. Aw, oh, son of a bitch. Do I have to go run another USB stick? Fuck. My asshole. Is there anything else we want to do while we're in here? I don't think so. I think we're pretty happy with this kernel. 1 to N. Uh, wasn't there something I wanted to do? Oh shit, chat. There was something I wanted to do, I think. No? Yes? I feel like when I went to the, my server room, there was something I wanted to do. Whatever. We'll just do this. Mounts. Mount SDB. BZ image. Target. On mount. Numa? Already did Numa. Unless there was some other Numa thing I wanted to do. Oh, what the fuck? I feel like I feel like there is something I was planning to add to this. And now I feel like a a wombo weeb. Switching. We're hot, chat. We're hot. There was something I wanted to put on it, and I fucking forget. One of the Google Buds. I think I have a couple Google Buds. I think they came with my phone. It's not come as a cat. I think you also need ISIL CPUs. I don't think so. I think that's something different. But I can add ISIL CPUs. I can append. The kernel scheduler won't interact with them at all? The processor scheduler will ignore. Oh. It basically means you have to explicitly pin with set affinity. Basically, those cores are excluded. Will not put newly created processors on them. Will not migrate processes to them. 
A process can be moved onto one by a sysadmin using a tool like task set. And it can be put onto them with sketch set affinity. I think you can ISIL CPUs all your CPUs. Um, moves them onto them. It'll not touch them. Yeah, what's the allowed range on it? Ship Google Buds to me. The value N can be the last CPU. Deprecated use CPU sets. Um, oh, ISIL CPUs is deprecated? Use CPU sets? Whatever. Okay. Wait, what? What? Did I scroll too far? Yeah, I scrolled too far. Holy dick. I was like, how the fuck does it have the old command line? Nice, full with counters. New text. It was by PSC early, nice. Fine. No hertz full. One to N. It didn't complain here, did it? It didn't complain. I think it is active. Are there other prints? Later in the boot? Oh, nice. TSC clock source. Yet refined it. So basically, Tick should be turned off on those cores, but things can get scheduled to them, but there's like nothing to schedule. In theory, ISIL CPUs would probably be even better. Nice, no error information. Got policy, zero. Yup. Yup. Policy just doesn't matter anymore. Pin to zero, and then... Okay. 
Current and future locked. Can't remember how long this. Okay, good. Did complete. I was spooked. Seems like no effect. It is interesting how there's really tight banding in here, and then there's these other ones. I, I wonder what would cause that. Like, why, why would some of these be staggered? And it's like that every time. Oh! I mean, we're still measuring the, um... We're still relying on the timestamp counter being different between all the cores. Uh, I don't think there's anything we can do here to get them more synchronized. But let's see. I, I don't think there is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's a way to like really improve that syncing. Hmm. That can't be how much they vary, can it? Like there's no way that the cores actually vary that much. Yeah, there's just no way. Okay. Oops. Yep, same banding. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, what can we do here? Is this just the the tick? Synchronization. Uh, we can use fired set. RDTSC minus fire dot get. And then we'll put that in sum zero. This will be elapsed. I I plus one. I plus one. Plus one. Can I omit this? No. Iter mute dot for each x is not zero. Fuck you. Okay, so we are measuring that. That will be in some zero. That's recorded like all the others. The others... The consumers are measuring the latency using a timestamp counter across cores, whereas uh, this one will not be. This producer is also on the most unstable core. 
in terms of... Honestly, we could bump all these up so that they're all on no hertz cores. Let's just put it on... Should be able to put it on one. Actually, yeah, let's put it on one. And then all of these will go to worker ID plus two. Okay. So now those are on worker ID plus two. Reset those. And we're now getting an initial data point. Oh, uh, let's get that affinity issue. Oh, uh, yeah, because we can't spin up all the cores if we skip those, but that's fine. This makes sure that that core and all the workers, so we have 94 workers, another producer, so 94 consumers, one producer, and then uh, another core that we just give to the OS, which we could do ISIL CPUs, and that would maybe even get us more, but... At some point, we don't really need more, man. Okay. All right, yeah, so the zero one has definitely some noise. And... Interesting. Interesting. So, and then that is measuring from there all the way to here, which requires that we read off the results. Basically, we get. Store, reset that barrier. So we have to wait for them to increase the tickets all over again, which makes sense. Yeah, we would expect the graph to basically be double what these are because they incremented up to here and then they incremented again up to here, if that makes sense. So like acquiring the lock, they incremented up and then they had to release the lock, which increments up and then this is the observability of the actual producer. But yeah, I think that's just noise. Noise that we probably don't have a say in as a user space process on Linux. Um, so that's fine. Let's, uh, I want to I wanna see it avalanche. I want to see, I want to see it without them synced so we can see the... Ah, uh, we can see the Boolean prop, or the, we can see the information propagate. So let's try this. This is going to look really cool, I think. Come on. There we go. Yeah. So there you can see... Wow, those later fetch heads are really expensive. Look at that. Wow. Those gaps are so huge. You can see the noise accumulating. Like, yeah, look at the look at the noise accumulating in, in like this region. Which I completely fucked that, didn't I?
Like, look at that valley. Oh, I just, yeah, I just can't render this, apparently. Sick. That's wild. That last fetch ad is like 4,000 cycles. Huh. Just so much contention on those. Is that because they're all fighting over reads of that value? Because they're waiting on the ticket? There's contention on the same ticket? Even though these are read, these reads are fucking these writes. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense. I think that, I, I think we can make a large improvement to that. All right, chat, that's the end of the stream. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking eat. Go fuck yourselves. See you later. <laughs> Cheers. Actually, that was a really fun stream. Hope you had fun. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. See you around. Cheers.